So considering these things are just a dot, we can't actually see any of what's going on. All we've measured is the spectrum and the change of brightness. We've learned an incredible amount. We're developing a really complicated, messy picture with multiple spots, one of them flickering, viewable from certain angles, gas clouds that's opaque and then transparent, depending on what's going on, a red star spinning around, something very massive. But what's going on here? I mean, to me, the, the real clue that really clinched it was this one. If you look really close in at the spectrum of most of these things, the lines, the hydrogen emission lines, don't turn out to be single, but turn out to be double. Double. So double emission lines. That means that there's material moving at two speeds, sort of some going this way and some going that way. And that's the Doppler shift for that material separating it. And that's, uh, I can think of a couple ways to have, have that. For example, if I shoot material out in a jet two directions, like one towards the screen and one away from the screen, then that would do that. Yeah, but let's say you did have your gas cloud that was, say, squirting one towards the red star and one away from it. Then as it moved around, when it's Ooh. face on, we'd see one going towards where. When it was a sideways on, they'd both be going sideways, so we wouldn't see the two lines. So we'd see, when it was edge on, we'd see the lines combine and then come out again. So we have a prediction, if there's jets coming out, that we should see a split and then they should come together and then they should split again depending on when we look at the data. That's assuming they're always aimed towards the star. Right. Um, and here's what we actually see. Here's the phase which is telling you where in the orbit it is and there's the, the spectrum of these hydrogen lines. Hmm. So we, we always see the two lines so they don't seem to be moving but they do change a bit in brightness. So sometimes we see, for example, here, the uh, stuff moving towards us is not as bright. And here, it's brighter. So the stuff is brighter than the stuff moving away. So let's think through what that might mean. So if you want to get two lines, no matter which direction you look at it from, the best way to do that would be have like a, like a spinning shell or a spinning ring or right. um, like a hula hoop or something that's rotating. Because then there's going to be the bit coming towards you and a bit going away from you and a bit going sideways, which will give you that little lower bit of emission in the middle. But it doesn't matter which angle you look at it from, you're always going to see some bit coming towards and away from any angle. And then the idea would be that would, that would mean that you would always see the, uh, the split, but the fact that it goes brighter and fainter on the two sides would mean that part of the hula hoop gets obscured, and then the other part gets obscured depending on what angle we look at. So yeah. what would that look like? So here's our model. We've got uh, the blue arrows showing gas moving around. And as you see, as it goes behind, first of all, the light coming towards us is obscured, then the light going away, then they're revealed one after another. So you obscure one side, then the other, then you reveal one side, then the other. But the fact that you can always see both means you wouldn't completely obscure it. That is, yeah. that diffuse gas is so big, you can always see part of it behind the star. Yep, so it kind of looks like we've got some almost spinning disk of gas going around maybe the central white dot and quite where this other one directional flickering is, white dot yeah. is, it's off center somewhere. I'm not quite sure where that fits in. So let's see if we can make some sense of this. So this is looking really complicated. I mean, we've got a cloud of gas that's sometimes transparent and sometimes opaque. And we've got two bright, the gas cloud is very tenuous, but weighs an awful lot and has some blue light coming out. So there's something hot and opaque in there as well. We've got a spot in the middle of the gas cloud and another spot off to the side that flickers, but only shines backwards. I mean, should we give up at this point? Well, it kind of seems like it, but this is the way science always works. So we need to think a little bit more through on the physics and that that's going to be our guide, I think. So the first thing that strikes me is that We've got this diffuse gas, but there's got, it's a huge amount of mass there. So something is very massive that's not emitting much light. And that sounds just like the white dwarfs we've only just been talking about. And yeah. we know there's a bright thing emitting blue light in the middle of this. So, and that would be about the right mass. We're talking about something that weighs about a mass of the sun and small and dense. So yeah, I think we probably have a white dwarf in the middle of this. That's probably a good working hypothesis. So if we have, we start with that hypothesis and we know we got this big red star, then one could imagine figuring out if we need, you know, a big, uh, bright uh, amount of material that we can start thinking about if material from the red star goes to the white dwarf how much energy is involved and whether that starts making sense. So maybe we need to follow that physical process. Yeah, I mean, we kind of need two things. We need an energy source to make all this gas really hot and flickering. Yep. And we also need a supply of gas. 
I mean, death won't come out from a white dwarf, so the red star is the obvious place to supply the gas. We know red stars when they come to the end of their life, which is what red stars are, it's the end of the life. Blow the winds out, we were talking about these planetary nebulae. So maybe that's supplying the gas, and as the gas falls down this enormous gravitational potential onto the white dwarf, it's going to require a lot of energy. Right. So maybe we can kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, and we need to we need to go through and remember that just because you have two stars next to each other, you know, no, the the heavier star isn't just a vacuum cleaner. The uh, the sun is not cleaning material you and me off the Earth right now. So there's some some physics we need to think through about exactly what it takes to scoop material off a star. It's okay, only, it's only a so, special situation. So let let's do the calculation of how gas would actually flow if you had a massive star orbiting another massive star this close in. 